Aero Racing Engineering is attempting to go for their fourth win in a row. However, they were beaten to the pole position by Henry Racing Technologies Yuka Pekka Kinkanpa, truck number 42. And you'll also notice that uh, the truck on the outside of the front row was the Aero Racing Engineering number 11 truck driven by Jakin Marco. However, Jackie Gardner, who leads the championship, started well down in the field. 30 trucks took the start. Uh, Far Horizon Motorsports brought uh, four trucks to this race. And we also have a newcomer in Anton Basevich as well. As we see, uh, Kinkanpa, going, uh, Kinkanpa may lose the lead, actually. He just got Belsteiner in the 99. Belsteiner going around in that blue uh, and yellow 99 truck. This is actually that team's last scheduled appearance in this series. It, uh, one, one truck pulled off into the pits in the start. That was Gordon Martin in the 36. Uh, Gordon Martin had um, early troubles in his debut as well. Marco in the 11 is slowly uh, falling back a little bit as Belsteiner is pulling away a little bit. Belsteiner giving the Crusaders a great swan song so far. He's had a great weekend so far. Uh, the uh, the 11 truck of Marco trying to close in Kinkanpa as we got Quentin Voss off. And that is Ryan Zimmer in the 31 as well. David Bloom in it at almost. And uh, one of the one of the Far Horizon Motorsports entries. Here's the Anton Basevich entry. Uh, he's got brought a Ford here and he just missed a whole bunch of uh, big schmazzle there. But he goes wide off and... Uh, Terry Stein used him as uh, used him as a reference and followed him off the road. A lot of damage to the left side of that nine truck. Basovich actually uh, doesn't look like he did too much damage to his truck. You know, oh, we got more problems up with Giovanni Rota up the hill. That could have been bad. Oh, and Petrovich in it in the 54. And we've got a couple others in it. Del Vecchio, I think, may have gotten in it. Ryan Zimmer in another one. So Ryan Zimmer is going to be hitting the alcohol pretty quick after this race is over. I can guarantee you that. Uh, he's going to want to forget this one already. Uh, and that was all in lap one. So we've got Marco now going by the 42 Kinkanpo. who looks like he got into the grass a little bit, killed his momentum on the main street, and everyone's just flying right on by the right on by the fin. Richie Foley in the 15, sticking his nose in there. Uh, Kinkanpo giving a lot of room, giving quite a bit of space. That's Given what we saw in Chicago, that might be a good idea to do around Richie Foley. Oh, we got a riot off. And that was close. I do believe Ginkanba's going to need a new change of pants after that. Uh, there's definitely some skid marks in the cockpit as well. Uh, that was nearly piled in there as we ride down the mountain of this part of this mountain course here at Lime Rock Park with on board at the 42. And uh, Richie Foley's gotten smaller in his rearview mirror. That's actually Lance Brown, you may notice, in the rearview mirror there. Truck number 41 is having a pretty good weekend. And now we're... Uh, about to rejoin the, uh, the the normal part of the course, uh, right over here, right across this bridge, and now we rejoin the uh, normal part of the Lime Rock Park course as uh, Kinkanpa follows. Uh, Soap Stever in the number three truck having a good start to the weekend. Antonio Del Vecchio rolls the dice on strategy, decides he doesn't want to be in the back with the Far Horizon Motorsports trucks and David Bloom. Um, reasonable, I suppose, as we got Wayne Shepard in the wall and off. And Dimitri Vitkin nowhere to go, but it didn't look like Vitkin hit him all that hard. I think Vitkin might actually get away with that one. And uh, Wayne Shepard in the 98 truck uh, didn't have a good week at Chicago, and his uh, week here isn't going so much better either. So Stever, truck number three, having a um, pretty solid start to uh, the race here in his plus one uh, SHP. This number three truck, um, pretty distinctive actually, with um, yellow and blue going along the side of it. Uh, but uh, Stever having uh, he hasn't really uh, uh, stood out too much, except for this weekend. This is the final points-paying road course of the Reject Truck season, as we've got the 15 of Richie Foley pitting early. Uh, some people throwing the dice. We got, uh, looks like, Wayne Shepard and Giovanni Rota in. There's a lot of red trucks in this series. Uh, here is the battle for 10th between Julius Vengero. Whoa! Fidrick Arneson sideways in truck number 5. And the uh, 14 is a uh, Steven Generic. That uh, that's a pretty distinctive truck. Guarantee you there, truck number 14. But uh, going you know, as we head uphill, air is uh, looks like that uh, that slide killed um, Arnis's momentum going down the main straight. And Generic was well and uh, was uh, ready to give him plenty of room. Oh, he's he's off. He's off. oh he saves it. Arneson saves it. That could have been a pretty big smash with the 14 and Generic, but Generic's gonna take the spot. Gen Temp Racing Team entry. Um, gonna try to now have a run 
uh, further up the grid is we have um, the Air Racing Engineering trucks, uh, the number 11, actually, Jakin Marco, second in the championship, going for that team's fourth win in a row. There's one win by Marco and two by Jackie Gardner, who leads the championship. Um, uh, chasing down Scott Belsteiner in the 99, making only his second start in the series. Ah, Marco's got to run down the main straight. Can he get something going? It's a long way down to the first corner as Bosovic pits the eight uh, in the background. He's having a great debut. But anyway, uh, coming into turn one, no, not quite. Not quite. Marco not close enough to make that move. So Marco's going to have to um, sort of lay back and wait a bit as we got Sasha Hawk. Oh, sliding it around in seventh. Oh, not quite, not quite. There's dirt there, and there's the wall. Sasha Hawk's done a lot of damage to the left side of that truck. Now, right now, the 68. Um, it's not going to help uh, with the handling at all, that's for sure. Hawk hit that wall. Yeah, you can see right there, Hawk hit that wall pretty hard. So that's going to definitely if, um, uh, affect the handling quite drastically. You can already tell because, uh, well, Hawk's got uh, two other trucks now right on his tail. Here is the 25 of Steve White, who's had a pretty reasonable weekend so far. It's the most we've seen of Steve White. Um, that is when he's not in the barriers, which is always a good thing. As uh, uh, he now pits, uh, he looks like he's pitting with the two leaders, and looks like so Stevers. Oh, looks like everyone's coming in. All the leaders in. Uh, Lance Brown, the 41 in the, that you just saw coming out of the pit. Uh, but Sasha Hawk is not pitted. Uh, this is a very mindless pit strategy. Um, yes, because when you have damage, let's just leave the truck out there. Because that's going to make the handling, you know, kind of magically repair itself. That's obviously the logic some people must be going with, but um, I don't understand this. Unless Sasha Hawk didn't hear the team calling him into the pits, in which case that's a different story altogether. Uh, but I would think he would bring it in on his own accord. As Scott Belsteiner, you can see his lead after the pit stop cycle. He's actually His lead is actually ballooned. So um, the Crusaders really throwing the dice here. They're going all or nothing in their, what is, we believe is their final race. No confirmation on that, though. Uh, but as of right now, this is the last time we'll see that 99 truck and Scott Belsteiner having a fantastic run with it so far. He had a good run in Chicago as well. Julius Fangerain, the 90, uh, I don't think he took tires in that stop. So he is, oh, he's off, he's off. Oh, he's in third. Oh, but he keeps it, he keeps it off, the, off the dirt. He's, uh... I corrected that mistake very quickly. He won the season opener at Adelaide. Here is Manny Geinhardt Jr., who's really turned his season around, battling Lance Brown for eighth. Geinhardt Jr.'s got a Manny Geinhardt Jr. in the 17's got a lot of experience. Oh, Brown's off, and the 41 truck pushed it a little too hard. Try to get uh, try to get a run on Geinhardt Jr. Not going to happen. But the, uh, the Twinings team's James Davies truck has had a pretty. Uh, Pretty solid weekend so far. His teammate Sandra Sessler in the 18 was involved in some first lap drama and is well down the order. All the way down in like 27th place. Um, way out of it. Sasha Hawk now back in 11 in uh, back in 11th right now in truck number 68. There's Anton Bosovic who didn't have a good pit stop but he had to repair some damage in that 8 truck. A bit more of a repairs than we expected actually in that 8 truck but that's also team's first start so uh, you know you can kind of um, understand why the picker wouldn't be top-notch necessarily be on top of their game as he as Bosovich nearly throws it off again trying really hard to get uh, that 11th place to have a run at some points on debut as Steven Generic is sitting in a very comfortable seventh really nobody challenging him but uh, he's trying to have a run on Soap Stever who's uh and we got oh Oscar Duck the third ah yes Oscar Duck the third I made David Bloom look good at Chicagoland and uh, well Take some skill there, son. He's running 14th, though. And he's actually having a solid weekend. He hasn't hit anything yet. Rick DeGlade Jr. is running uh, in 10th. He's the last car in the points. There's nobody around him. He's having a pretty uh, pretty lonely race so far. Uh, but if you're going to have a lonely race, might as well be in the points to do so. Unfortunately for him, he's 10th. So he's not exactly in the safest position to be in. Uh, anyways, here is Marco trying to uh, get around Sandra Sessler, who's going to be right in front of him. There she is. Apologies for some of these camera angles. Um, a bunch of chimpanzees uh, told us where to put the cameras. As we got off goes the 11. That could be that could be disastrous because Steve White is right there. Uh, Bell Steiner has already gotten around the 18 of Sessler. But uh, now here's what I don't understand here is why Sandra... Ah, no. Sandra Sessler, I think, is actually reeling in Giovanni Rota, 
And, uh, Rhoda and... Oh, Marco's off! Marco's off through the shrubbery, back on course. And, you know, there's damage to that 11 truck now. White to second. Here's why Sandra Sessler, I think, was probably pushing as hard as she is. Because she wants to beat Giovanni Rhoda for the all-important position of 27th place. It pays zero points whether or not you win or lose it. Congratulations. Chicanus Mobilis. Anyways, here is the, uh, uh but, uh, Giovanni Rhoda is giving the leader a pretty easy time. Scott, uh, or maybe he's not. I don't think Scott Bellsteiner wants to take the risk, actually. I think it's more of a case of that. When you see a truck with that much damage on it this early in the race, there's probably a reason why. And, uh, Sessler's going to take that all-important 27th place. And, well, Giovanni Rhoda's being a pretty good back marker. You see right here, he's giving plenty of room. Um, letting everyone go by. 28 truck just let him making everyone's life very very easy Sandra Sessler kind of the reverse battling trying to race with you uh, with a uh, Yuka Pekka Kinkanva as if it's for position um, especially when you know our teammates running in the points and I uh, just get out of the way already I think uh, Kinkanva is gonna be um, quite livid ab ab about this because if there's anyone that Kinkanva is probably be the most livid with it'd be um, Sessler or the uh, the farmy as we've come to know the Far Horizon Motorsport entries. As Scott Bell Center pits the 99 again, second round of pit stops has begun. Sessler stays out. Thankfully, she's out of everyone's way. Um, Soap Stever has stayed out in the three truck. That's interesting. And so is Lance Brown. I guess uh, Soap Stever has thrown the dice. Uh, he's uh, trying to get himself uh, possibly onto the podium. Uh, this number three truck, one of the plus one entries, his team, uh, they, he replaced Brandon Cutmore in this car, or this truck, sorry, and um, as far as Lance Brown is concerned, I'm pretty sure he was tired of being stuck behind uh, Manny Geiner Jr., who uh, I do believe was saving fuel uh, throughout most of the, throughout most of that last run there, uh, in order to have a faster pit stop now, and uh, Manny Geiner Jr., one of the more experienced drivers out there, he, uh, he certainly knows how to work the fuel as far as strategy is concerned. As you see, uh, everyone's now leaving pit lane. Scott Bell Center had a pretty solid pit stop in that 99. He's gonna retain the lead. No real significant changes in the running order here. We're gonna kinda have to wait and see what the, oh, we have a, oh, a terrible stop for the 11. I take that statement back. Yakin Marco, terrible, terrible, terrible stop. He's back there with Oscar Duck the third. That's how bad that pit stop was. So about 14th. Oscar Duck III actually having a solid run. He hasn't hit anything yet, as I, I, I have to reiterate that point. He has not hit anything. As Steve White in the 25 is um, trying to, it came very close to uh, beating Yak and Marco's fastest lap of the race. Marco has fastest lap of the race. I think it's important to point that out. As, uh, Soap Stever is uh, gone. He still has not pitted the three truck, so he's definitely stretching it as long as possible. He's not going to make it to the end of the race. There's no way he will. He'll come up about, uh, well, four or five laps short, but uh, this three truck definitely on a different strategy, and I have, at this point, I have a feeling that Lance Brown's uh, pit strategy is do whatever Soap Stever is doing, because that seems to be the reasonable thing to do. Here's Oscar Duck the third in the 96 truck, uh, the highest of the Far Horizon Motorsport entries, uh, by quite a margin, actually. He's having a great run so far, and oh, oh he's off. Up, oh, take that off the checklist. Oscar Duck the third has hit something. And he's hit the shrubbery. And he might get... Oh, he didn't get it stuck. Okay, he didn't get it stuck. But Dimitri Vitkin in the 13 was apparently using him as a reference and uh, slid off himself. But he didn't get uh, get it all the way out into the kitty litter like Oscar Duck did. Vitkin, uh, also one of the more experienced guys. He, you can see... I, you know, he's trying to hold off Richie Foley in that 15 truck now. Foley having a solid day. Not quite what he wanted, but still, it's better than his efforts earlier in the year. Soap Stever, truck number three. Uh, and now he's going to pit it. Yep, here he is. The plus one SHP is pitted. His teammate pitted way earlier than him. That's Sessler in the pit lane up there. That is not Geinhardt Jr. There's Lance Brown in the 41. These are the last two to pit of the trucks that actually are on the lead lap. Uh, Sandra Sessler, uh, effectively a lap down. Now the main question is where is Bell Steiner going to be in relation to Soap Stever? Is Soap Stever's gamble going to pay off? Could it actually vault him into the lead of the race? And that looks like no, absolutely not. He's going to come out fourth. That is uh, Bell Steiner out front. Second, that is the 25 of Steve White, and right behind him, 
right behind Steve White, Julius Svangerai in the 90. So now we just got a handful of laps to go, and uh, this 99 truck of Bell Steiner absolutely dominated this event in the team's last race. Now uh, they're having, talk about a good send off party. Here we have Julius Fangere, who won the season opener, as I mentioned, Adelaide, in a bizarre race, but he, but uh, Antonio Del Vecchio gave, gave him a hard time at the end of that one, that's for sure. As we got uh, Kinkonfa now challenging Soap Stever for fourth. Uh, after getting the pole, it's not exactly what he'd like to see. Um, normally, uh, the driver that wins the pole on some of these road courses has a pretty easy shot of um, uh, snagging, snagging not only snagging the lead fairly early and uh, the race win, but here is uh, Manny Geiner Jr. He was saving fuel in that last run. He's now in sixth. He's actually made up quite a bit of ground. So uh, all that experience paying off for Geiner Jr. in the 17 truck, and he's having a, he's having he's going to have a pretty good day uh, actually. Sasha Hawk, truck number 68, chasing down Doug Lyde Jr. in the 7. I do believe this is for the final point, uh, final points paying position, actually. That's the battle. Actually, no, they're 9th and 10th, so uh, both of them are going to get points regardless. We're now on board with Julius Vendry down the main street. See, let's watch the, um, let's watch his tachometer here. And he's pulling almost 9,100 RPM entering turn 1. This is on the, we just taken the white flag now. Scott Bell Center, it looks like he's getting, might have this one, uh, under lock and lock, sock, and barrel, but um, oh, and now he's shifting down a little bit, and oh, we got the 99 wide. Bellsteiner is throwing it into the wall. Scott Bellsteiner on the last lap. He had this one completely under control, and he's thrown it away. Bellsteiner in the Crusaders' last race has thrown it all away at the top of the hill. Steve White can probably not believe what has just happened here, because there he goes. He pushed it too hard. White applied the pressure just perfectly. Bell Center uh, didn't hit the wall, but he came very close, and then he hit, and then he uh, smashed to the left side of that truck on the on the uh, the opposing wall. So what was going to be a very easy win for Bell Center? He had controlled this one the whole way through, but it didn't matter because he threw it all away. In that truck number 99, we're on board with Steve White, and at this point, you have to wonder what White's thinking here. That's it, but he, it's good that he didn't panic there. White just uh, was able to sneak it around the 99, and there he goes, and Svendre up to second. Now, you want to talk about someone who's in the title hunt, that 90 truck, Julius Svendre, this, this could really help his championship aspirations. As now, coming down the main straightaway, uh, Steve White, truck number 25, is going to walk home into his first Reject Truck Series win. And it's the first time an aero racing truck has not won since round two. Svandre came home second. Scott Bellsteiner led all but four laps in this race. Soap Stever led three laps, and he also didn't lead the one lap that counted the most. Stever beat Kinkanpa home for fourth. Geinar Jr., Lance Brown also had some strong runs. Steven Generic, Sasha Hawk comes home tenth. Uh, a good seven seconds up the road of Fidrick Arneson, who came home eleventh. Jackie Gardner's points lead is still pretty safe, but Julius Fangere and Steve White are beginning to close in. There are just three points-paying races left in the Reject Truck Super Series, the next of which will be at the Martinsville Speedway.